the first Shakespeare I both read and saw, I remember very well, I was nine years old, I was at my boys' boarding school in the south of England, and it was Macbeth. And we all enjoyed it hugely because the three witches, uh, the roles were played by the head boy and the two vice head boys, and we just laughed and laughed at them having to put on witches' costumes and cackle and stir the pot and say cauldron boil and cauldron bubble. Uh, so that was a vivid memory and then a couple of years later we read Julius Caesar in class and we all loved the line about um, uh, friends, Romans and countrymen, lend me your ears, which we thought was hilarious, bearing in mind that this was, you know, rather puerile boy's sense of humour at the age of 11. Uh, I think it's Antony and Cleopatra. These are such, it's such a grown-up love story. Uh, and it combines that with huge range and scope right the way across the world. You get a sense of half the world being, um, being considered uh, alongside this wonderful love story. I'm also very fond of the comedy of errors. It's one of the few plays where you absolutely can't stop laughing from the beginning to the end. It's hilarious. Well, Macbeth, I think, probably. It's, it's so gripping the supernatural atmosphere, lots of witches and battles, um, and uh, a, a study of ambition that I think is really interesting, and a kind of, and sword fights, and it's got everything really for young people. Yeah, it depends what you mean by young, but I think the answer is probably Romeo and Juliet, um, because for somebody in their teens, this is a very easy, relationship, love story to relate to. Uh, and of course it has that wonderful tragic ending, tear-jerking ending. So that's probably the, the best. Um, Othello also, lots of, uh, lots of um, gripping drama, that powerful jealousy theme, a really evil bad guy. So that's probably the other one. I'd say one that is definitely underrated is Troilus and Cressida. Uh, and the reason why people don't put it on very much and don't like it very much is that it is deeply sceptical about so much. It's actually quite, almost quite a cynical play and people don't know how to take that mixture of the tragic and the comic and undercutting uh, normally um, values that are normally held in very high esteem like honour and love and so on. He, he lets nothing escape in that play. If they don't, it's hard to imagine what does. Um, the, the kind of penetration into the human condition, all the different emotions, human values, the ways we recognise and disrecognise each other, and the extraordinary poetic language this is all done in, are more powerful in Shakespeare than in any other writer I can think of, at least in English. So there's no question that if you look at literature and philosophy from Homer to the present day, this is an absolutely outstanding kind of mountain, or range of mountains. Oh, I would have to say John Bell's Hamlet. Uh, one of the first Hamlets that I saw, and this was in 1974, I think in Canberra. You better ask him. And my other two favourites are my daughter Catherine, uh, doing Cleopatra in Oxford in 2011, and my son William, doing Time and of Athens at the Bondi Pavilion in 2008. Oh, where do I even begin? Um, there are so many, it's, it's impossible to know where to start. I, I like the Macbeth one. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. I like that one. I like some of the, so many of the things that Cleopatra says about Antony, oh my oblivion is a very Antony and I am all forgotten, uh, or Prospero at the end of the tempest, our little life is rounded with a sleep. Um, the, the Mercy speech from um, the Merchant of Venice, uh, the Shylock speech about hath not a Jew eyes, if you prick us do we not bleed, I can go on and on. <laughs>